I read an article somewhere that you started selling from the back of the car. Yeah. When I would go take my children to play school, the, the pyjamas I was selling were in the boot of my car. So as the, mummies, as the mummies would come, I'd literally open the boot of my car and tell them, I've got these beautiful pyjamas. You have to see them. You just have to buy wow. them. Yes. And um, literally built the whole business from off the back of that. Hello guys, how are you doing today? It's Ty I know here again and today I have a very special guest for you guys. I am here with Mrs. Adenike Ogunlesi, who is the CRO of Gatimo Limited and she's also the founder and creative director of Rough and Tumble. How are you doing today, ma'am? I'm good, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, nice to finally meet you. I know, <laughs> nice to finally catch up with you, you know. I've known Rough and Tumble for a very long time. I've been passing this road multiple times and I usually see this company, but I never knew I would be able to like meet up with the founder. I just want you to share your story behind starting this company, because I believe your story will be an inspiration to a lot of young people out there. Thank you very much for <laughs> inviting me to be on your platform, yes, and so. well done for showcasing the beautiful parts of Nigeria. Thank you. Um, which I'd seen before I actually met you. <laughs> I started Rough and Tumble really because there were two or three things I was trying to do. I was trying to, first of all, be financially independent. I wanted to have my own money. I also wanted to be able to serve in order to be able to make this money that I wanted. And I wanted to prove that good things are possible to come out of Nigeria. Despite what you see, you have to learn to see what's invisible. You have to learn to trust what is the unknown because what you're trying to create is actually in that space of the unknown. That was what I was trying to do at the time. I was a young mother with three children. I wanted pyjamas for my children. To my surprise, a couple of other women asked me to make for their kids, and somebody asked me to make seven pairs, one for each day. And you know, a light bulb immediately went off in my head. It's like, she can't possibly be the only woman who has that need. So there must be a whole group of women. So I then just made a whole bunch of pyjamas and took them with me to play school with my kids. And every day I just stood outside and I spoke to the mothers and told them I had these beautiful pyjamas that were locally made and they were very nicely made. And, you know, there were 750 naira at the time, and 950 wow. naira, 1,200. So you know, how, how many years ago was this? Oh my God, it seems like another lifetime. <laughs> but I started making those pajamas in 1996. It just grew from there. And you know, more mothers wanted the pajamas. One of the biggest lessons I learned in life was use what you have to get what you want. Mm -hmm. So focus on the things that you have and the value you can draw from it, as opposed to the things you don't have, um, because that doesn't take you anywhere. So we set up our first store that was like four meters by six meters. It was so tiny, but I had learned about marketing. I had learned about, you know, customer experience, customer service, and I wanted to embed all of that into creating this brand called Rough and Tumble. So from one little store, we went to three stores, to five stores, to 10 stores, to 17 stores, and hopefully by the end of this year to 20 stores and a wow. full e-commerce platform that is very happily serving many Nigerian children with happiness, as we say. It's the rough and tumble making kids happy. I guess that's how it was meant to start. You know, and as I keep saying, the that's lesson right. from that is that use what you have to get, to get what, what you want. want. Because what you have then, you will find creative ideas on how to use that thing which you have, as opposed to constantly looking out the window to see what's, what am I missing. For me, that was one of my biggest lessons in life. So what's your background like? What kind of family are you from? Oh, I'm from a polygamous family. My mother was originally Scottish, but became naturalized as a Nigerian, and so lived here for 50 years of her life before she died. But she was the greatest influence in my life, her values of whatever thy hand findeth do with all thy might. I grew up in a, a place called Ijebodi. Really? Um, in the GR in Ijebodi, yes. <laughs> if I was to see you, I would think maybe you like grew up like outside Nigeria? Or no, like I that. didn't. I was born outside of Nigeria, but I grew up, I actually grew up in Ijebodi until I was about 18. Life is what you decide to make of it. Where you're coming from should not de determine where you get to. It's just another stepping stone to where you want to get to. So you draw the values, you draw the beauty, you draw the lessons, you draw the experiences from that, and you create where it is you want to go to. 
did it. So I started working from when I was about 18. I divided my money into three. One part I put back in the business I was doing, one part I put into savings and in investments, and one part was what I then lived on. I cashed in my entire savings portfolio. And in getting ambitious, I then wanted, you know, a loan. And then I took my first loan. I'd never put myself under so much pressure because I'd never owed so much money before in my life, you know. I mean, this was like now 20, some 25 million naira I was now borrowing. Uh, at oh. the time, but this was like 20 years ago. And that's, that's, that's a lot, that's yes, a lot of money. Yes, it was a lot, lot of money, money then, then, you know. <laughs> but I paid it back in 16 months instead of 18 months, which, wow. was, which was the timeline that I had. 16 months? Yeah, but it was, I, it was a lot of pressure. Okay, you know, it was a lot of pressure. And I found that borrowing money actually helped me become very disciplined. It meant I needed to put systems and processes in place, and I had to submit to the authority of the business as well. So I get paid like everybody gets paid. You know, I get a pension like everybody gets a pension. Really? You are, yes. You are paying yourself salary? Oh, yes. Okay. You cannot, I cannot not pay myself a salary. Yes. I can't work for free <laughs> because I own the business. No, hell no. You know, but um, if you are going to run a business properly, then you have to do that. You have to give yourself a salary, you have to pay yourself a salary and live within that salary. I'm really super grateful for, for the team that worked with me over the years to be able to achieve that because you can't do it alone as a business owner. You know, you have to have a team that is dependable, that takes ownership, that you can trust. And I know that I've kissed some frogs in my life, but I've also kissed some princes and princesses, you know, as I always like to say. How did the name Rough and Tumble come? Everybody asks me this, and it's this just, a, you know, it was just so easy. My neighbor at the time, Bimi Shashore, you know, was standing outside her kitchen door. She was going to do a teddy bear festival. She asked me a question, did I know anybody that makes children's clothes in Ankara? And I said, you're looking at the person. I'm, I'm going to do it, you know. So she says, what name are we going to put on your canopy? And I said, I have no idea really, she says, what kind of clothes do you want to make? I said, you know, I just want to make clothes that children can play around in, rough around in. And she said, okay, I'll draw a drum with children tumbling out of the drum. And I just said, okay, let's write rough and tumble. Mm, wow. And presto, so <laughs> no big headache with any consultants, with any focus groups, with any... That was just it. The Gatimo Group actually also has a manufacturing facility that manufactures for rough and tumble and manufactures uniforms, face masks, and oh, PPEs okay. during the pandemic. We were able to pivot very quickly. And we actually made over a million face masks. I'd never wow. made a million of anything before in my life. <laughs> wow. You know, so that was, that was an experience. So this is the cutting department. Okay. This is um, what she's doing here is um, called cut panel inspection. Okay. So what we're producing. Okay. They are marking it on the floor. Oh, okay. You know, so that that's the quality systems assurance. Assurance. It's so important. Okay. So what they're working on over there is like t-shirts. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's going to be a production of t-shirts down there. This is the production. So that you can see from wow. here. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it is, but this is what we need in Nigeria. Yeah, it is. We need, we, need. we need we need a lot of manufacturing. Yes, it's what we need in Nigeria. It's a blade. We will literally run across. Oh, okay. To the other side, yeah. Did you study anything that has to do with fashion in, in school? No. Okay. I didn't. I didn't study anything that has to do with fashion, to be honest. But I grew up with creativity all around me. My mother had a business where she made adirai. Oh, okay. And so she made clothes out of the adirai. So I grew up uh, making adirai with my mother, with blue hands, red hands, purple hands, green hands, really from know. playing with the dye. All that creativity was always around us, and we grew up with adirai tablecloths, adirai napkins, adirai curtains, adire clothes, adire everything. I don't know why I thought I could be a lawyer, but I, that was my father's dream for me, to be a lawyer. I wasn't interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were always interested in business, in, in making stuff. I didn't stuff. even know that I was, you know, yeah. apart from, I, yes, as a little girl, I used to take the fruits from our tree and try and sell them. Really? Yeah, wow. you know, because we lived on, on like two acres of land in Ijebode, okay. and you would have oranges, mangoes, mangoes. cashew, uh, and wheat. And we, yeah, yes, I know, we, we I know, black, we love black things. Yeah, you know, and you try and sell them, you know, just to make a little bit of money, and you know, 
So I guess maybe that's where I was honing my my entrepreneurial my skills from. Without, <laughs> without realizing. But I used to also go to the markets with my mother from a very early age as a child. So I guess you know that whole thing was feeding me Into. very very in, in deep deep in my subconscious, and I wasn't really conscious of it until I then decided that you know what I really don't want to be a lawyer, but I, I don't know what I want to do. And she said, come home and let's see what you can do. And then I discovered that, you know, I had a passion for this thing. So I've done a lot of courses, different kinds of courses. I believe in continuous develop, personal continuous growth and development. I've always believed in that. And because you can only teach people how much you know. Yeah. And so you have to be able to evolve yeah. into a higher version of yourself, you know, as you progress and as your life unfolds. Otherwise, everybody around you will not grow beyond what it is that you know. You know. So you have to keep knowing more so that you can teach more. This is our flagship store. What we produce locally, you can't tell anything that we produce locally. It's very difficult for you to tell. Those shirts, we, all those shirts we produce, the trousers we produce, so you can't tell. You can't tell. We always set the standards high, the production standards very high. It's not an easy thing to do, but it's doable. Your generation wants everything to happen overnight. <laughs> and it doesn't work like that, you know? It's a process. Yeah, yeah. Success is a process. It's a journey. So which outfit are we buying here today? <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who's buying, yeah. not me. <laughs> okay, I'm can I even see some of these ones? The this Ankara. Is like the yes. This is really nice. You know, this is our Timotiwa brand. We're Africans, you know, we're ready to embrace our Africanness. It's never been a better time to be black and to embrace being black. I wanted to tell a story of us, where we come from and where we are going. The where we're going is a limitless opportunity. It's a white canvas. True. But we have to write that story. We have to embrace who we are and write that story for ourselves. In building a business in Nigeria, I know how tough it is for a lot of people. So can you tell us some of the challenges you faced in building this business? Because this business is over 20 years now. Mm. Over time, the challenges have been different. And my perception of the challenges has become different. It's a challenge, but it's also a growth opportunity. It took me a while to be able to frame it like that. But once I was able to frame it like that, there was a little bit more ease, you know, um, with the way I then addressed it in looking for the solutions to overcome whatever those challenges were. So most of the challenges we had at the time, initially when we started, for example, was getting the bank to take us seriously. They didn't take us seriously. Then there was a challenge of people, finding the right people. As an entrepreneur, being able to communicate what your vision is to those people so that they have a buy-in and they can then work with you to actualize this dream and grow this dream. I needed to learn how to communicate. I needed to learn how to be patient. I literally needed to grow myself as a person, to first master self-mastery and leadership, self-leadership, before I could then lead, begin to think of leading a team. Then there's the systems and the processes that you have to put in a business. So you have to hire consultants, and you don't always get the right consultant. So the systems and processes are the only things that will help you build a business that will outlive you. And that was always my desire. A lot of people currently in Nigeria, especially the young people, because of the way everything is happening in this country, a lot of people are feeling like you can't really build a business. So what would you have to say? Because I'm sure you've seen many years of Nigeria. What would you be your advice to them? Is it easy? No. If you live in Nigeria and work in Nigeria, you have the best mental muscles that any human being ever grew in the entire world. I tell you, that's what I say. <laughs> and I honestly believe that. Nigeria builds your mental muscles like no other country in the world will because you are literally thinking on your feet 24-7. The question is not that it's not possible. The question is, what are you passionate about? What are you willing to commit yourself to? Every time there is a challenge, it is an opportunity to grow your idea, find a solution to a problem, or grow yourself as a person. Something is always going to happen. So if you have framed it as, oh, it's Nigeria, it's never this, it's never that, that is what you're going to get. 
But if you create a framework that says, okay, this thing is a challenge, all right, so how do we approach this? When I wanted to take a whole house in GRA 24 years ago, people said to me I was crazy to be taking a whole house in GRA to sell to children's clothes. Somebody actually said to me, who do you think you are? You have to be very careful. The people that you hang around with, the people that are around you, the people that are speaking into your ears, speaking into your life, you have to be careful of the people you surround yourself with. That is so key. You, for example, the first time I saw your video was you were in some waterfall in Niger State. Even I wouldn't go to Niger State. <laughs> but look, you committed yourself to it and you were ready and willing to do whatever it took for you to get to that space. You did it. You know, we have to be careful. Yes, it's difficult, but nobody ever promised you a life of Riley or a life where there will be no challenges. Besides which, a life without a challenge is a life that's not worth living. Because how then do you stretch yourself? How do you grow yourself? It's tough, and I know that it's tough, but you're tougher. That's yes, the real right. truth, yes, honestly. Right. That's the real truth. So you have to go on that journey of finding out who you are and being true to yourself. Not necessarily, this person is doing this, so I'm gonna do this. No, don't do that me too stuff. What is it that wakes you up in the morning, that makes you excited, that makes you happy, that you don't even want to go to sleep because you're so excited about what it is that you're trying to do? That's what you should put your energy into. You get up every day and you go and you do it. You do a little at a time. A thousand steps, you take one step, two steps, three steps. Before you know it, time passes, you grow. Your business works. You have to have a proof of concept for that business. If you don't have a proof of concept for that business and you're sitting down saying you want to do this, you want to do don't live in fool's paradise. You are even so lucky today. You have the internet. The people you're looking for are two, three clicks away from you. Find them. Be that person that is always looking for the way because when you keep looking for the way, the truth is the way opens up itself to you. Seek you shall find. Absolutely, you got that. That was what I was just going to say. It took the words right out of my mouth. Yes, seek and you shall find. But in your seeking, be authentic, be sincere, be genuine. Want it for the right reasons. Thank you very much. I think that's, that's like the best closing I've had on any of my episodes so far. So thank you very much for sharing your story with us. We really appreciate it. I'm sure a lot of people out there would have learned a lot from your story. Guys, I'm going to link the pages to rough and tumble so that if you guys want to buy anything for your kids i know there are a lot of mothers out there watching this eventually maybe when i have kids out i'll, I'll come here shameless, <laughs> shameless plug okay. we have the best children's clothing in the whole of west africa in fact Ooh. i dare to say in the whole of africa <laughs> Definitely check them out. Support African businesses as I always say on this channel. Yeah. That's all we have for you today. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.